What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. We're gonna check out which WWE weapons are fake and which are real. WWE secrets, man. By none other than WrestleMania, this should be a good one. I'm interested to see uh, which weapons were real and fake. Uh, for those who don't know, I, I know for a fact when they use the thumbtacks, those are real thumbtacks. Those are not fake thumbtacks. Those are real thumbtacks that they have to pull out when they go to the back at the end of their match one by one hey man wrestlers bro the, the the things that they put their bodies through to entertain us man it is it's it's one hell of a thing so appreciate all the love and support road to 60k and let's get right into this bad boy oh and fire you can't fake fire you can't fake that Despite wrestling being predetermined, certain elements of wrestling must be executed perfectly in order for wrestlers oh not God. to be seriously injured. I'm gonna be honest this with extends you. to the in-ring. That spot will always be one of the most hardcore spots in WWE. That spot is ridiculous. Getting speared through a flaming table. Risking yourself to get burnt for the entertainment of people. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my. Just ridiculous. Every time I see that, I just, my Jesus. Work itself and the moves in the matches, but also in relation to whenever weapons are incorporated Ooh. into a match. Wrestling fans have always loved matches that involve weapons such as ladders, steel chairs, and tables have been fan favorites for decades. Oh, so I guess he's probably had to mute the word. You know what? I, I'm, I'm guessing so because the, uh, YouTube is very strict on it, so I probably won't be able to say it. Uh, I'll probably have to mute the word myself because YouTube is very strict. <laughs> From the iconic hardcore matches in ECW to the TLC matches in the early 2000s, wrestling fans have often wondered, are the chairs actually made of steel, or is the barbed wire actually real barbed wire? Mm -hmm. Well, you might be surprised. When it comes to weapons, you would be shocked to learn that the vast majority of weapons used are 100% real. What the hell, Morrison? It's gotten my head! Jesus. But with that being said, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE weapons and their secrets <laughs> exposed. <What? laughs> Dog, YouTube has changed so much you can't even say that. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell wow. for daily wrestling videos. Number one, tables. I love it. Get the tables. Since the inception of the tables match in WWE at the Royal Rumble 2000 when the Hardy Boys would face <laughs> off against the Dudley Boys, the tables match has become one of the WWE's most popular match types. Mm -hmm. Introducing a table into a match has become a surefire way to get the crowd instantly invested in the match and a wrestler being put through a table <laughs> will indeed get one of the biggest reactions of the entire show. He didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, Wait sure a minute. Did. Sure did. No way, oh, hang on. As for the tables themselves, they are made from extremely thin chipboard, meaning they can barely maintain the weight of a single human being. Therefore, when mm. someone falls or goes through the table, it instantly implodes, making an explosive noise in the oh, process. Okay. The oh, okay. Oh, alright. I did not know that. You start. I did not know that. Really did, man. That I learned something today is one of the safest weapons in wrestling, mainly because there isn't too much additional pain for the wrestlers to take. After all, it's just a small amount of chipboard they are falling through. Although we must admit that the metal poles holding up the table may cause some damage. Yeah. It has also been known for tables not to break on occasion. This mm -hmm. is usually when the wrestler doesn't land in the middle of the table, which can look kind of awkward on television and usually means the wrestler has to be put through the table again. Yep. As for the Japanese table, well, those are normally actually made out of real wood oh. hence why they never break number two oh, kendo wow. sticks. The kendo did stick not know one. that man did not know that so the japanese table they nah we use that real wood over here so if you fall through that man the impact speed the height 
definitely is probably increased. One of the most popular weapons in modern WWE. This is mainly because it's one of the safest and the risk of injury from a blow from the weapon is extremely low. The kendo stick itself is made from hollow wood and breaks apart after just a few strikes. The tape on both sides of the sticks allows the stick to stay together for a few shots without breaking off into little pieces which could seriously injure someone. The dangers of the kendo stick can be seen when watching the WWE One Night Stand pay-per-view in 2008 Jesus. where the Big Show was seriously injured by a defective kendo stick. Recently though, the kendo stick has somewhat become forever damaged as a threatening and imposing weapon following the infamous Bailey vs Alexa Bliss kendo stick on a pole match that did no favours for the aura around the weapon or the two women in the match itself. Number 3. The Garbage Can The garbage can is actually one of the weapons that is completely different from the traditional garbage can you've seen lying around your Rock was beating his ass! <laughs> oh. The ones featured on WWE television are made out of aluminum or tin. This means the can itself is no thicker than a can of soda or beer. Mm. This means the can does little to no damage on the wrestler being hit by it, which is always a good result when it comes to a weapon used in wrestling. Mm. Surprisingly, it can actually help a move be less painful for a wrestler to take. For instance, when Shane McMahon hits the coast to coast, the garbage can he uses softens the blow for the wrestler, meaning uh. they get a cushioned impact rather than the full force of Shane McMahon crashing into them boot first yeah number four that makes sense thumbtacks i know thumb these to are... the surprise of many are actually the real deal yeah thumbtacks don't need much of an explanation as the consequences of a wrestler oh! coming into contact with the tax is quite self-explanatory as soon as a wrestler takes a move on oh! for giving oh i remember that match when oh my god big foley mankind threw orton back first into the thumbtacks oh my Woo! <laughs> tax damage is instantly noticeable and this is usually followed by blood and agony thumbtacks were extremely common in ecw and then later in the attitude era in matches featuring oh! foley they would slowly disappear from wwe television following wwe reverting back to a very pg product However, they would make a rare appearance at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view mm -hmm. in 2016 in a match between Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho. Jericho, who took a bump in the tax for the first time in his career, stated that the anticipation for the bump in the tax was worse than the actual bump itself. Mick Ooh. Foley would reveal a little trick when he stated that if the bump is taken on a large surface area such as the back, the pain is quote-unquote less severe as it spreads it out. He also mentioned taking the tax out is actually much worse, oh and the God. pain resides for several days. Oh Number 5. God. Barbed Wire The usage of barbed wire in WWE is actually quite complex as they vary when they use real genuine barbed wire or they opt for fake barbed wire for the safety of the wrestlers in the match. Notably, in Mick Foley's autobiography, he discussed his match with Triple H at the 2000 Royal Rumble. The match itself heavily features a 2x4 wrapped in barbed wire. Foley revealed that real barbed wire was used whenever Triple H would use the barbed wire bat on him. However, when Triple wow. H would be hit with a bat, fake barbed wire would be used. It's unknown just how fake the less than genuine barbed wire is, but speculation suggests that if fake barbed wire is used, the tips of it are rubber, meaning the wrestler won't be seriously hurt. Oh. On occasion, wrestlers opt to use the genuine stuff for dramatic effect. For instance, Batista in his Hell in a Cell match in 2005 against Triple H opted to use the genuine barbed wire to get the best results possible. Wow. Number six, the kid. That, now nah, that I did not know. So, Mankind, Mick Foley would use the real barbed wire, like, if the bar, the real barbed wire is being used on him, that's fine. And then Triple H would get the fake one. Wow, that's that's even more of a testament to how hardcore Mick Foley was, bro. Guitar. The guitar is a weapon made famous by Jeff Jarrett. His trademark guitar was often used as a weapon to smash <laughs> over his opponent's head. The spot in question where Jeff But I believe they were like hollowed out. Like they're like, they're not like... I don't know. I think they're like hollowed out. They don't have like what normal guitars, like the the really solid wood and all the stuff that's in it. So I think they're kind of hollowed out. Jarrett would hit someone with a guitar would always look great on television because the guitar would explode on the person's head and make a loud noise which looked incredibly mm -hmm. effective. 
but the guitars themselves are actually genuine guitars, however they are shaved off completely on the inside, making them incredibly light and incredibly breakable the moment they are smashed over a wrestler's head. Mm. Now we all know what you're thinking, well, the case where Jake Roberts was hit over the head with a guitar by the Honky Tonk Man was actually a solid guitar, hence his real life injury. Oh. Jake Roberts once told in a shoot interview that the person who was in charge of getting the guitar was Pat Patterson's partner. Well, that guy went to a guitar shop and thought, well, Vince would want the best. So they got a proper guitar, man. Number seven. Wow, yeah. Like like I said, you get hit with a real guitar, that's probably going to cause a legitimate concussion. They're, those are just hollowed out. You know what I'm saying? The, getting hit, you saw what happened. He got hit with a real one. It didn't even implode. It was still solid. Oh, my God. Glass. Whenever you see a wrestler go through a glass window on WWE television or be hit with a glass object of some kind, despite the sound and damage looking very similar to the impact that would come from the damage of normal glass, it is in fact sugar glass. Yeah. Alright, my power had went out. <laughs> so I lost my Wi-Fi and everything else just instantly kind of came back on. So, alright, let's get back into it. Glass. It is in fact sugar glass. Yep, which sugar I glass figured. is completely safe to use. Well, when used in the correct capacity, that is. Despite glass in the WWE being extremely safe, disaster would strike in the match between Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon at the 2001 King of the Ring. In one of the most brutal matches of all time, Ooh. Angle would suplex Shane through panels of glass. However, they wouldn't smash on impact, and Shane's head would bounce off the glass Ooh. and land on the concrete below. Yep. It took numerous attempts for the glass to break. The reason for this is because WWE had forgotten to rig the glass and actually used plexiglass instead of the sugar glass. The match was so brutal due to the mistakes with the glass that Shane needed 50 stitches following Jesus. the match. Number 8. The Sledgehammer The Sledgehammer has an interesting history in WWE. Introduced mm -hmm. by Triple H in 1999 as his primary weapon. Initially, it was a fake sledgehammer that was used whenever Triple H would use the weapon on his opponents. The fake sledgehammer would contain a rubber head attached mm -hmm. to a wooden base. The only time a real sledgehammer would be used is when Triple H would use it on something such as a casket, just as he did on an episode of Raw in 1999. The usage of the sledgehammer would drastically change forever at WrestleMania 17. This was in the match between the... Yeah, Triple H sledgehammer, man. It's, it's iconic, but it, you know... When he's actually hitting someone, you obviously it has to be a rubber head because you hit someone with a real sledgehammer, you'll damn near probably kill him. <laughs> so. As Triple H would hit the Undertaker with the Depending sledge on where you hit them at, of course. Hammer head as the Undertaker would raise Triple H up for the last ride. Unfortunately, the sledgehammer broke, which forced the Undertaker to suffer a nasty cut. From that point onwards, WWE would opt for Triple H to use a real sledgehammer. He would then proceed to use his hand to cover up the metal mm -hmm. parts of the hammer, so no harm would be caused to the other wrestler. Yep. Number 9. Ladders Since the first ladder match in the WWE between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart in 1992, the ladder match has attained a status as one of the most popular matches in WWE history. Now the ladder is used in two instances during a match. It is used as an instrument for the wrestlers to climb to win the match. Oh my it's god. Also used as a one of the most craziest spots. Oh my god, I remember that shit. <laughs> we gotta go back and see that. Oh my god, that spot is just always gonna be savage. I believe the move is called Salida del Sol. I could be wrong over the ladder, but bro, just status is one of the most popular matches. Oh in my WWE god, history. Look at now this the spot. The ladder is used bro. in two instances during a match. Look at this. It is used as an instrument for the wrestlers to climb to win the oh match. Oh my but it's god. Also used as <laughs> This naturally means that the ladder must be strong enough to contain the body weight of wrestlers, but also safe enough to be used as a weapon. The structure of the ladder is slightly different to a traditional ladder. The steel used in the ladder is hollow, so it's lighter and it's safer to hit a fellow wrestler with. Oh. Additionally, the center of the ladder is made to be much weaker. This is for spots where a wrestler is put through a ladder, which is often seen in the Money in the oh, Bank matches. Okay. Despite the ladders being made slightly differently than traditional ladders, ladder matches and then later TLC matches have caused countless injuries. Yes. For instance, the three teams who made the concept of the TLC famous, that being the Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys, and Edge and Christian, who all cite the matches with ladders as reasons why they still have injuries to this very day. Yep. And number 10, Steel Chairs. 
The steel chair is probably the most iconic weapon in WWE wow. history. <laughs> Incorporated into several famous matches and segments throughout history, mm -hmm. fans have often wondered if steel chairs are all that WWE makes them out to be. The fact is, the steel chairs are legit. Yep. Only yes, this is... I've had... I, I believe I've talked about this on this channel, bro. You get hit with a steel chair that's not fake. Those are real steel chairs. That's why they don't do chair shots to the hand anymore it's only like to the back the body but no those are real steel chairs bro legitimately chairs that you sit in no they're hitting you with the difference between the chair seen on wwe televisions and normal steel chairs is that the rivets are broken mm. this means that the chairs can be folded completely flat which makes them safer to hit a fellow wrestler with mm. now there was a time where wrestlers would take chair shots to the head on a regular basis Unfortunately, due to research into concussions and issues relating to blows to the head, chair shots to the head have been officially banned in WWE. Yep. Former WCW World Champion Diamond Dallas Page recently discussed the dangers of the chair shot on Joe Rogan's podcast. He discussed how in preparation for the infamous Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman vs DDP and Karl Malone match in WCW, DDP had to explain the importance of the execution of the chair shot to Rodman. He would explain to Rodman that the steel chair must always be kept completely flat when performing a chair shot or it could end up seriously injuring a fellow wrestler. Mm -hmm. Injuries of course still happen today with chair shots, as seen when Sean Spears hit Ooh. Cody over the head with one. But there you have it guys, the secrets behind- Yeah, he was busted open legitimately too, I remember that. But yeah, um... This was interesting. I, I really enjoyed this video. I'm definitely going to have to put a like on this one, man. This was a real good video. I did not know some of these things. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, it's once again a testament to wrestlers and their willingness to put their body on the line for our entertainment. So, comment down below. Let me know what was the craziest spot you guys can recall ever in wwe or aew where ladders steel chairs tacks thumbnails anything that was talked about in this video if you can recall a spot that just you'll always remember to this day let me know down in the comment section below the one that will always come to me is easily the flaming table that will always be in my mind a flaming table Edge spearing uh, Mick Foley through a flaming table. I, I I don't even know what to say. <laughs> like, that's real fire. That's a table that we now know is, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's not like traditional wood. But it's still a real fire. They legitimately fell through fire. And they had to have the fire extinguishers, you know, people with fire extinguishers right there ready for the spot. That's crazy, man. So comment down below, let me know. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to CCK. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.